just being here. His ministry for us. I was so grateful to be here. There are men that are. You hear him teach. I hope you've got you've got capacity in your brain. This <laughs> he's a great teacher, great teacher, great teacher of the word and a prophetic voice and a prophetic voice and I'll say that once again a great teacher of the word I, I people don't know these are the people that I've been stealing from for years I, <laughs> you listen I say ah, edit, edit, edit but the way you which bible? Uh, not the holy ghost it's youtube it's youtube So today I'm revealing one of my sources. <laughs> but I know he's here with his lovely wife, Pastor Grace. Please can we celebrate her as well? And I know he'll come. Can I please ask? Just give your, your undivided attention for the next one hour or so, right? And we'll be blessed. He has come all the way. Hasn't come all the way from Lagos for you to. Different story if we brought somebody from around the corner, but somebody has come from far. That means that there's great grace that has come accompanied him. Amen. I was so grateful. Mount Zion Dollar, are you ready? Yeah. You're not hearing me. Mount Zion Dollar, are you ready? He's a prophetic voice and a teacher of the word. He's one that is trailblazing and is leading a generation of faith-filled priest believers doctrinally sound men that are beginning to break down the barriers and frontiers of religion limitation bringing many that have been disconnected from sound truth and reconnecting them back to sources of deliverance. Are you ready, Mount Zion? He is a set man and point man of the Remnant Christian Network in Lagos. For the first time, please welcome Reverend Austin Opori. Hallelujah. Somebody give the Lord a shout again. Come on, if you are like in Jesus, pray somebody. Father, we thank you. We give you praise. Spirit of the living God, we honor you. To you be all the glory. To you be all the honor. We are gathered here today as your sons and daughters. There's somebody in the congregation that has been believing God for an anointing. It comes upon you now. It comes upon you now. You've been trusting God for the manifestation of an anointing. An anointing. It's coming on you now. The person I speak about is on my left. You are my left. Receive that dose right now. Receive that dose right now. 
receive that anointing right now there is an impartation there is an impartation there is a release there is a wind there is a wind somebody receiving now you are on my left you are on my left that should be your right but you are on my left receive that anointing come on us there is a stirring of fire there is a stirring of fire from somebody's womb from within your womb there is a release of fire Tayakwa Bele Atembe Kopron de la Paradi Ala Kipon Maria Satabanda Receive that fire. There is a burning from the inside. You will begin to cult in culture it. You will begin to walk in that reality. You will really walk in that reality. There is a pool. There is a pool of fire. There is a pool of God's fire on a lady, on a lady, on a lady, on a lady. There is a pool of that fire. There is a pool from your inside. There is a burning. There is a burning. Father, we thank you. Thank you. Thank you. If you are hungry tonight, you will be filled. If you are expectant tonight, you will receive. If you believe the Lord your God, you will be established. If you believe the prophetic word and utterance, it will prosper you, you are prospering your spirit. Father, we thank you. There is an unusual grace that comes upon you, young lady. There's an unusual grace that comes upon you. There's an unusual grace that comes upon you. Or a dear Tala, I sense God wants to anoint people here tonight. I sense the Lord wants to anoint some people here tonight. If you are trusting, you are believing God for a release in your spirit. Oh my, oh my. There is an anointing that the Lord, the Lord, young man, I see the Lord raising you. I see Jesus raising you and he's bringing you out of destruction. He's raising you today. He's raising you. He's raising you. He's raising you. Receive that fire right now. There is a fire that is coming upon you. There is a fire. There is grace that is being released. There is an anointing all over this building. I don't know who. I don't know who is trusting God for that anointing. But there is a release. There is a deluge of God's grace. Just stand beside him. Just don't touch him. Just, just leave him. There is an anointing that is coming on about three people. On about three people. But this guy has a unique calling. God and is bringing you out of destruction today. There is a unique anointing that is flowing into the, into the congregation right now. Body house, take over. Habos. Kande Bahali Ataba. Kere Kuba Radia Kandalabo, Sanabandia Kalebo, Delebostia. There is a young lady listening to me. Your wilderness experience has ended tonight. Your wilderness experience is ending tonight, says the Lord. Akupe Paradia Tanda, Mangla Telabo Shaba, Lepon Paradiata. There is a release of an anointing. There is a release of an anointing. There is a release. There is a release. Somebody is being renewed right now. Somebody is being renewed right now. Oh my God, I feel it on my hand. Somebody is being renewed right now. There is a renewal of strength. 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 There is a reconstruction. There is a reconstruction. There is a reconstruction. I 
I need only the keyboard for now. Just to see you face to face. Face to face. Face to face. Lord, I want to see you face to face. Face to face. Face to face Monsaya wants to see you face to face Face to face Face to face Austin wants to see you face to face To see you face to face, face to face, face to face. I love you forever. I love you forever. into an apostolic center <laughs> before you say amen I want you to process the things I'm saying by the spirit because it's a call to duty it's a call to higher responsibility but as you accept it as a people the Lord is going to release grace upon you I don't know what you desire but receive it I don't know what you desire, but receive. Just receive it. Receive it. Receive it. Just receive it. I don't know what you desire. Receive it. Ah. This place is becoming an apostolic center. Grace to fulfill your mandate, brother. Receive grace. Receive grace now. Receive grace now. Receive grace now. Receive grace now. Uh, the Lord is saying, I should say to you, Pastor Pangwe, that this house is going to become a resource base. And there is an assignment to bring direction. You are going to be the house of doctrine and power. I'm going to release on you a mantle for discipleship. I will grant you the grace to be a disciple, says God. I will open your spirit I will energize you, says the Lord. For your center shall be an apostolic center. Where you will continue in prayers, in breaking of bread, in fellowship. You will continue with the four-point agenda. And as you give yourself and yield yourself, as I train you, you will train others. For I will take you on and I will begin to train you, says the Lord. I will take you by the hand, I will take you by the heart. I will take you by the hand and I will take you by the heart and I will speak through you. These are the days where I, the Lord,
God will begin to teach you. For I will open the books unto you. I will open the pages unto you. And I will cause my river and my stream to flow through you. See, I have raised your church. I have raised your people. I am raising your church. I am raising your people as a training center. I am raising this particular branch as a training center. Men and women, elders, we come to learn from you. For I, the Lord, I will strengthen you. I will strengthen your people. I will bet another measure of excellence. I will bet another measure of excellence. For men will come into this place. They will encounter me. Mount Zion Church, I will give you the gift of presence. I will give you the gift of presence. My presence will be evident. Every time you meet together, I will give you my presence. Azalea, I hear the Lord say, I should say to you that a new face has opened. He said, I have opened a new face for you. I'm opening a new stream. I open a new stream, a new river unto you. I, the Lord, am your father. I am opening a new stream, a new stream. You will be sensitive and you will do well to sense the movement, my movement, the movement of the spirit within your vessel. And I hear the Lord say, I should say to you, fear not. For I will begin to give you instructions when you minister. Be bold to declare them, says the Lord. He said, I will begin to give you. Now you will enter into the minstrel dimension. You have mastered the psalmist operation. Now I will bring you into the minstrel office. You will operate with sounds. You will bring prophetic words. You will bring prophetic direction through sounds. You will bring prophetic direction through sounds you will hear the, the sound of the keyboard in your spirit before you had it been played you will operate the minstrel dimension you will tell them this is the sound you are hearing you will explain it and he said with this sound comes power with this sound comes authority with this sound comes power with this sound comes authority with this sound comes authority oh my I hear God say I should say to you Italy, the nations are opening get ready I see Europe I see Europe opening get ready get ready it's the time for an announcement says the Lord it's the time for an announcement says the Lord training center and I want you to hear me clearly a season of training will happen for some time and at some point you will become a governmental people but for now it's a training center you will train you will train you will train the upcoming generation says the Lord when you are you see I see, I, see a, I see a transition upon you and your husband from this place on dollar. There will be a transition. But for the season that you are here, oh my, I know the, the, the members will not like what I'm saying, but I see a season of transition. Very strong. Not too far. Not about, not up to four years. So you have seasons to train, says the Lord. You are going to raise men that in the next couple of years when you come back, you will see them and you will marvel at what the Lord will be using them to do in Ondola. The Lord said, he is raising you as a disciple and as a trainer. And from there you will come into an apostolic governmental grace. But for this season, is the season of training. You will train, you will train, you will raise men, you will raise men. Do not be like others. 
do not be like others let your eyes be single do not be under pressure do not create impressions allow me to do what I'm doing with your vessel for a time comes where this place cannot hold you again it will be clear it will be visible that this place is a training center apostles will rise from here prophets will rise from here teachers will rise from here evangelists will rise from here pastors will rise from here are you not 16 i hear mighty businesses will spring forth from here i don't know who i'm talking to but welcome to the training center i know your name is mount zion but it is now aka the training center the lord will use you to train the lord will use you to train and i hear the lord say the men you train we infiltrate systems the men you train we infiltrate systems the men you train we infiltrate systems then we have the strength and the capacity to break the bow to break the bow their hands will be trained to war and their fingers to fight i am preparing an army from this place yes the lord i am preparing an army i will use it to rearrange the territory get ready for territorial influence Get ready for territorial influence. You know, Jesus, I'm beginning to see why he wants to anoint people. I, I just saw that now. There is an oil of assignment on, your, on this house. There is an oil of assignment. Help me tell your neighbor, we are on assignment. We are on an assignment. The Lord is sending all of us. Come on, tell your neighbor, the Lord is sending all of us on a trip. That's why he's anointing us today. Are you ready for the anointing? Let me, let me sing a song for you. It's a song you are all familiar with. But I will change it now. How many of you know that song? Anointing. Fall on me, anointing. Fall on me, like the power of the Holy Ghost. Fall on me, anointing. Fall. So let me change it now. Anointing flow through me. Anointing flow through me. Let the power of the Holy Ghost flow. churches to which the anointing of God will fall, but for Mount Zion, is a conduit, is a passage. His anointing is going to flow through you all. It's going to flow through you all. It's going to flow. I hear a name, Patrick. Please, if your name is Patrick, come out quickly. Anyone here that bears Patrick? Either you are bearing Patrick or you have a relative that is bearing Patrick. Please, if there's somebody like that, come to me quickly. Either you are Patrick or you have a family member that is Patrick. All right? Um, that's a name I hear in my heart. Um, if you're here, don't worry. Um, I'm not. I know that um, the prophetic has been abused here. So I'm not intending to. to okay, is he your brother? Your step father mm. the Patrick I see is somebody that God has called into ministry is your dad born again 
on his heart. The Patrick can see somebody that God has called into ministry. Oh, he was here. He left. All right. So let me pray for your dad. You know, this thing you said has happened to me in Kano. I went to preach in Kano, northern Nigeria. And while I was praying at home, the Lord showed me a seat at the back. Took me into the hall. Showed me a seat at the back and said, somebody's going to sit on that seat. And he wants me to prophesy on that person. I said, what do I tell him? He said, when you get there, I will tell you. So while I was preaching, I went to that place three times. Nobody on that seat. And when I was almost done with my ministration, I remembered. Then I went back there. Nobody on the seat for the fourth time. So at that point, I broke my silence and I said, hey guys, there is somebody that is supposed to be on this seat and I'm supposed to pray for this person. They just said, the person just left. So I looked at the next person that was seated there because I mean, the blessings of the Lord, the word of the Lord, so shall my word be, it shall not return. The word of the Lord will not return. So I looked at somebody that was seated there and I said, hey, young lady, I don't know you from Adam. Um, I don't know what your husband does for a living, but I sense he's a businessman. And hear the word of the Lord. The Lord is restoring his business and every conspiracy against his business is broken and God is increasing and promoting him in his business. That was February, right? No, that was March, first week of March, 2020. The moment I left, COVID started. And six months later, I know eight months later, I, I think when they lifted the COVID, I started receiving a call, a call, a call, and I, I refused to pick. Then the PFN president, youth president, Kano called, you need to pick this call now. It was that, wife, that lady I prayed for, her husband. I remember that day the Lord said I should empty my pocket and give to her and ask the husband to put that money in her business. She did. In lockdown, the man became a millionaire during the lockdown. <laughs> Built a house from, 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 from foundation to completion, a five-bedroom duplex. Right? What I saw about this guy was that he's called into ministry and he's had one or two struggles. He had one or two fears. And today God is about to give him an unusual capacity to run. But I'm going to pray for your dad. That the grace of God will encounter him. So the gift of salvation will come. God will strengthen you also because you came out. And God will give you a gift. All right? You will, you will rise up to become a honorable woman. I, did, I didn't say lady, but a honorable woman. Hey! I see someone in this congregation, in the next four years, you are going to represent your constituency. I don't know if they understand that my language. You are, you are, going, to, you are going to come into relevance politically somebody here in the next four years i don't know who this person is but i just saw it now the lord is going to give you political relevance here in zambia here in zambia when others are running away you will not run the burden to stay will be here and the wisdom to begin to entrench yourself into the political landscape will be given to you the person i speak about now you are quite young and god is going to do this with you because God is, oh my, your, your emergence, Sabraha Nakabo, Lebre diha klabo ho nasivla hane, Mandra klivro do sabla, Kabo on the shivle kebra, Kabro do sabla. Your emergence is a time marker for the political space in Zambia, says the Lord. You are going to emerge as a young person, and the moment to emerge, your emergence is, is seen and known. Then the youth of your time and the youth of Zambia is coming into a place of influence and power. So in that day, when that happens, know that there is a shift in your political landscape. Because I see a shift coming. Write it down, man of God. I see a shift coming to your political landscape. Akabo, Sibre Nekadi Akaboa, Mangle Teli Prahakla Borodos, Saplene, Akridina Ankambrondo Sufle Kedia. I see women, I see young ladies, I see women being empowered. I see, I see a protocol that is about to be broken in your political landscape. There is a major protocol, and I'm talking about this season, not too far from now. There is a major 
protocol that is going to be broken. And I see a mighty emancipation of the female folk. I see, I see a race. I see a race. I see a race. Akopo, paradi, aklande, aklande, aklan, kupangratila, mangle, tusu, prekeledi, atai. I don't know what your political um, space looks like. But I see the Lord having a pact with the women of Zambia. I see God having a pact with the women of Zambia. And I see protocols being broken. I see protocols being broken. I see the Lord breaking protocols for the sake of the female folk. Grace. Grace to you, young lady. You will grow to become a fine woman. Gifts. Treasures. 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 Treasures be given to you in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Lord. You are going to do me a favor. Maybe tomorrow. We have long sessions. So tomorrow... We pray and trust God for people that are sick. If you have anyone that is sick, deadly disease, please bring them. We want to pray for them. And Jesus is going to heal them. Jesus is going to heal them. You have an auntie in England who is trusting God for the fruit of the womb. She's been barren. She's in England. An auntie in England who is... Oh, Jesus. Lord, I want to teach now. An auntie in England who is believing God for fruit of the womb. Please, can I see you? If that's your relative. To be specific, the person I speak about, the lady I speak about is in England, not any other place. So if it's not you, I will assume I've not heard. But I know I heard. In fact, she's been believing God now for about three years. And there's somebody who is having a, an issue with bleeding. You are having a, a challenge with bleeding in the name of Jesus Christ from tonight. That bleeding ceases. It ceases in the name of Jesus. Jesus bled for you so that you will not bleed in the name of Jesus Christ. So um, um, we are used to when we finish preaching, the person will sneak and say, man of God, it is my auntie you were talking about. If you have followed me, followed us for some time. I don't give word of knowledge and I ask the person to come out unless the Lord asks me to. I will never ask you to come out. But if Jesus says for you to come out, I will say it. And your coming out does not invalidate or validate what I do because I've been doing this for 23 years now. Okay? So, uh, I mean, I don't do this so I can validate what I am doing. I do this because I'm instructed to do it. Can I hear an amen? amen. So, be at peace and don't be ashamed. Praise the Lord. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. You know, there is, there, is, there is somebody here that has been crying that, Lord, uh, to be specific, you've been asking God for the teaching grace. You have been asking the Lord for the teaching anointing. It, it's going to come on you today. It will come on you today. In Jesus' name. Please help me celebrate Mama and my brother celebrate them for me hallelujah you may take your seat thank you yes thank you amen John that came to Picos and his dear wife and to my brother and my friend you know we have come to love you too and thank you for taking care of us um, thank you so much mama please help me celebrate the choir what's your name here is it choir they call you fresh oil 
Help me appreciate fresh oil. The oil, the oil is fresh. The oil is fresh. Thank, thank you for having us. Uh, my wife has been properly or duly introduced by my brother. Uh, my wife is here with me. Uh, May 23rd will be 14 years. 14 years. of this beautiful unveiling, ongoing unveiling union. Praise the Lord. You know, it takes a lot for you to stick to one woman and to stick to one man. It takes a lot. It's, it's, it's the love of God and the fear of God. You see, when you want to pray for your husband, the prayer point you should pray is, Lord, let him fear you. It's not, Father, let him love me, let him see me. No, 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 no. A man has capacity to love 1,000 women and they will not fight. Go and ask Solomon. Yeah. Ask Solomon. Did you ever hear in the Bible that they were crying for food? They were crying for, no. You know, so it takes the fear of God. So I used to... I wonder the kind of prayers you pray as women. But add this one. Every time when your husband is traveling, just say, Lord, plant your fear in him. Amen. When he's in the office, Father, plant your fear in him. Amen. All right? That was the prayer of Joseph. Why would I do this wicked thing against my God? The fear of the Lord. Hallelujah. All right, we want to go into the word of God. We are looking at the resurrection power. So let me prepare you ahead of time. I'm not going to do teachings on resurrection alone. Since the Lord said this place is a training ground, we are going to be taking time to do some training. And he said it's going to be an apostolic center. So we will look at the four-point agenda of the apostolic work and the apostolic movement when God um, inaugurated that apostolic conclave or congress that started with 12 people and cascaded into what it is today. So we will be looking at some of those happenings, but for the next two days, let's look at resurrection power. Let's look at what made Christianity Christianity. Let's look at why we are who we are. Praise the Lord. So this evening, please turn with me to the book of Luke 24. And this is the reason why I'm doing this from Luke 24, from the book of Luke, is because a lot of us know this story. Now, upon the first day of the week, very early in the morning, they came unto the sepulchre, bringing the spices which they had prepared, and setting, which they had prepared, and setting orders with them. And they found the stone rolled away from the sepulchre. And they entered in and found not, and found not the body of the Lord Jesus Christ. And it came to pass, as they were much, as they were much perplexed thereabout, behold, two men stood by them in shining garments. And as they were afraid and bowed down their faces to the earth, they said unto them, Why seek ye the living among the dead? Help me ask your neighbor, are you dead or alive? Said to them, Why do you seek for the living among the dead? He he is not here, but he is risen. Somebody say, he is risen. He is risen. Mm. Somebody say, he is risen. He is risen. Now, now I, I want to ask you a question, or I want you to write down this question. Was Jesus the first to come back from the dead? Okay, so you can give me an answer. Was Jesus the first to come back from the dead? No. How many people came back from the dead in the Bible? I don't have, what do we call that? Thing? What's your money here? Is it shillings? Kwacha. I don't have kwacha, but I have shillings. Do you spend shillings here? That would be illegal. All right. Um, how many, how many, how many, how many? This is Bible study, okay? We'll do Bible study and then we'll migrate into prayers. Am I communicating with you? So we have established which you got correctly that Jesus was not the first person to come back from the dead. Yeah? So how many people were raised from the dead? 
Do we have somebody that was raised from the dead in the Old Testament? Yes. By who? Huh? Elijah. Elijah. Your Bible study is rusty. <laughs> by who? Okay, you, you call it Elisha here. Okay, so by Elisha. So you, that means you call El Elijah Elijah. Right? Okay, so by Elisha. Okay? So, I mean, we have historic perspective of resurrection that Jesus was not the only person or was not the first person to rise from the dead. I want you to put that by your right hand or your left because I'm going to ask another question. So number one, we've established that Jesus was not the first to come back from the dead. And number two, I ask a question again that was there a resurrection or a, a bringing back from the dead in the Old Testament? And then you said what? Yes. Meaning that resurrection is not a new phenomenon. Okay? It means that resurrection is not a new phenomenon. However, there is something that made Jesus' resurrection a phenomenon. You are not with me? Resurrection is not a new phenomenon, but the resurrection of Jesus is a phenomenon. And there is a reason for that. Okay, so let's read on. He said, why are you looking for the living from among the dead? He is not here, but he is risen. Remember how he spake unto you when he was yet in Galilee, saying, the Son of Man must be delivered into the hands of sinful men and be crucified, and then on the third day, rise again. So, he did tell us, the angels appeared to them and said, Jesus Christ is not here. The first thing you need to see is that there was a mighty obstacle. What was that obstacle? A major stone, all right, that closed the entrance of the tomb where Jesus was buried. And when they, when they got to that place, the stone was no longer there. When they noticed that the stone was not there, they were perplexed. They were perturbed. They were afraid. And then these two men approached them and said, what are you looking for? Why are you troubled? The person you are looking for is no longer here. You are looking for the dead. You are looking for the living among the dead. And Jesus is only permitted to stay dead for two days because on the third day, he's meant to rise again. Now, when we talk about the spirit of resurrection or the power of resurrection, a lot of Christians are locked up here. And that is why I decided to start my study from this place. Because I want to break the, the, the resurrection story into two parts or the resurrection reality into two parts. Number one, I want to talk about resurrection, the event. Most Christians are here. We have platooed here. Every time it's Easter period, a lot of Christians will say, today is the day that Jesus, what, rose from the dead. So we are referring to an event and not a reality. Um, the reason why the, we need to look into these two is because Easter is not a yearly celebration. Easter is not meant to be a yearly celebration. Easter is meant to be a lifestyle. Easter is not a yearly celebration. When you cut Easter to a yearly celebration, you are remembering an event. You are saying that, oh, this is an event that took place many years ago. So when you see people who celebrate Easter as an event, they can be smokers, alcoholics, drunks, womanizers, yeah. women chasers, murderers, arm robbers, banditry, terrorists, but their name is Michael, Gabriel, Daniel, Juliet, Daniela, Philomena, Dorcas. They have Christian names. So they say, oh, today is Easter. And since today is Easter, I need to send Ajale a message. Oh, Pastor Ajale, happy Easter. You know Jesus died today. Event. 
It's not a reality in his life, but he can celebrate an event because his name is Gabriel. If you are with me, say amen. amen. So when we talk about Easter as an event, what are the unfolding truth about Easter as an event? What are the unfolding truth about Easter as a pointer to the fact that something happened? I, want, I don't want to run ahead of myself. But if I do, no problems. If I repeat myself when I'm talking because I ran ahead of myself, it's not because I don't have what to say. It's because I'm re-emphasizing a truth and drilling it into your heart. Can I hear an amen? amen. So, Pastor Grace, what, what, why, why, why are we Christians? What, what gives muzzle to Christianity? What gives muzzle to Christianity? What's the difference between Christianity and Islam? What's the difference between Christianity and Buddha? What's the difference between Christianity and atheism? What is the difference? Why are you a Christian? What differentiates Christianity is the resurrection. But remember I said resurrection is not a new phenomenon. But in Jesus, resurrection is the phenomenon. Did you get that? In Jesus' resurrection... Right? When Jesus rose from the dead, his resurrection is the phenomenon because the resurrection of Jesus is the defining moment. Is the beginning of Christianity. Now, what's the difference between the death that rose in the Bible? What's the difference between that death and the death of Christ that rose. One difference. The reason why the death of Christ is phenomenal till today is because every other man that got back to life or jacked back to life or brought back to life, there was an impute of a man. Every resurrection in the Bible had the impute of a man, even though it was supernatural, but there was a face of a man to that coming back to alive. Did you get that? Huh? Are you with me? I know you've heard and listened to so many messages on resurrection. And please just follow me. When Lazarus was going to come back to life, Jesus was there. When the little lad was going to come back to life, Talita Kumi, come out of him. No, that's not the one. That Jesus just looked at and stretched his hand and brought that child back. Right? Let me, let me give you the numbers of people that came back from the dead, from the Old Testament to the New. Number one is a widow at Zarephath. Okay? Number two is a Shunammite woman's son. Number three is Jairus' daughter. All right? Number four is Lazarus. Number five is Dorcas. So, if you want to look at this dispensation, Dorcas came back to life in the apostolic setting, meaning that raising the dead is supposed to be a common phenomenon among us. If, if, if you are with me, say amen. Now, then raising the dead was not, an, was not a New Testament phenomenon. It happened in the Old Testament where the Holy Spirit only comes and go. He pays visits and leaves. He just comes to empower so that an assignment will be carried out. A strategy will be released. The mind of God will be given. All right? And then in the New Testament, you see it happen in the day of Jesus, in the days of Jesus, and you see it also happen in the days of the apostles. Am I communicating with you? Now, in all of this, you will see the impute of man. You will see either a dramatization of the prophetic for which Eli Elisha said to Gehazi, when you are going, don't speak to anybody. So when he was coming, they said, Hey, Reverend Austin, mm! he just gave prophetic sign language. Because his spiritual father said, don't speak to anybody. Don't greet anyone. Be very spiritual. When you are very spiritual, things will happen. Here is the mantle, but he couldn't perform. Because the lifestyle could not match the mantle. You will not know that the lifestyle could not match the mantle 
until the days of Nehemiah. Um, 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 this guy that was a leprous, um, a leper. Um, what's his name, Pastor Grace? Naaman. So it was during Naaman's time you will see that in his heart, in his walk with God and in his fellowship with God, there was this lust for materialism. When his spiritual father said, we don't need this now, he ran after the man and collected some garments that he will wear when he comes to Zimbabwe. That he will wear when he comes to Zambia. That he will wear when he goes to South Africa. That was his own understanding of ministry. So he said, my master needs some garment. That was when you would now say, oh, this was why the mantle didn't work in his hand. The heart was never right at that time. But as he kept walking, you will see that there was a point where his heart became right. Where he sat before the king. Now, a leprous man cannot sit before the king. And he never told the king that, king, it was my master that afflicted me with leprosy. He's a bad man. No. He was talking about the man and talking about the exploit of the ministry of Elisha before the king. And while he was talking, the woman to whom he was talking about appeared. And he said, the story has concluded. Why? Every evidence will terminate argument. This is the evidence of what I was saying. This was the woman I'm saying to you that my master prayed for. So, when he was casted out with leprosy, he had gone to repent. And the Lord had healed him. Because no leprous man can stand before a king. Every leprous person in the Old Testament were ostracized to the backside of the desert. When you want to give them food, you drop it on the road and you play the drums. They know that they have brought food for them and then they come out. If you are with me, say amen. amen. So this is that guy that could not bring back to dead a son that was dead. Alright? But when the master got into the place, he came in and stretched himself upon that son and that guy came back to life. Dorcas's old was that the people were crying and said, this woman has been a good woman to us. You cannot let her die. Lazarus's own was that he said, let's go and wake this child, um, this young man for he's asleep. And they said, uh, uh, how, if a man is asleep, why do you wake him up? John chapter 11. And then he came into the place, he cried, and then he said, thank you, God, because I know you answer me always. Lazarus, come forth. And the Bible says, he that was dead came forth. You will always have an impute of a man. All right? For the, the Jairus' daughter, he was there. He raised her. But the phenomenon of Jesus' resurrection was that there was no impute of man. No man said, come back to life. In fact, he predicted his death and said, if I die, I will come back to life. So, and he gave them a time marker. Somebody say time marker. Jesus' resurrection is so phenomenal because he, only, he is the only person that knew when he was going to die. You are not with me. All of you, you prophesy that you will not die, you will live. Yes, you are correct. But you don't even have an idea when you will die. You don't have an idea how long you will live for. Even as you are now, if you say, God has promised me long life, my own definition of long life is fulfillment of purpose. That's my definition of long life. My definition of long life, Apostle Philip, is fulfillment of purpose. If not, you would have said, what is long life in Jesus' life? 33 years. 33 and a half. 33 and a half. I shall not die. Yes, I will live to fulfill my purpose. So I believe that nothing can kill me. Nothing can take me out because I have an assignment. So number two thing about that is purpose is the greatest preservative of life. Purpose is the strongest and the greatest preservative for life. If you understand purpose, you can stand before the Lord and say, Lord, am I done with my assignment? Paul, nobody could take him out until he finished his purpose. Because there's going to be a prophetic writing by John. Throw him into the desert, he will not die. Put him into the, the tongues of oil and fry him, he will not die. Do you know why? There is a prophetic right that must come to the church. And the only person qualified for that prophetic right is not Paul, but John. 
John the beloved, John the man that knows the, the gesticulations, John the man that understands the bodings, John the man that can place his head on the chest of the master to feel the heartbeat of the master, the bodings, the promptings of the father. He alone can bring that kind of prophetic right. When he encountered God in Revelation chapter 1, he fell as dead. Because he was seeing God from another standpoint. He knew God from the time zone. He knew God as the God of what? The Israelites. He knew one that was born in the Jewish community. But now when he saw him, he saw him with fire in his eyes. He could not look at the man whose chest he laid his head before. And he fell as dead. So Jesus said to him, no, come, come. You can't die. They tap him and say, come back. The reason why you have been alive, by the way, is for this season. You need to pick your parchment and you need to begin to write. Am I communicating with you? So the dead, the, 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 the resurrection of Jesus had its accurate predictability. When you look at the predictions and the permutations that went on with the death of Christ, they were accurate, number one. Number two, there were many prophecies that were captured concerning his death and his resurrection. And when he came, he lived according to those prophecies and he brought to pass everything that was said concerning him. Now, point to note. When we talk about the resurrection as an event, we are talking about the resurrection of Jesus and how it affected humanity. We are talking about the resurrection of Jesus and the awareness he brought to humanity. In that scripture where we read, the Bible said to us that the angel said to them, why are you looking for the living among the dead? So the first thing to note is the evidence of Jesus' resurrection, the events. Number one, first century Jews, Romans, and Christians all agreed that Jesus' tomb was empty. Number one, first century Jews, Gentiles, the Romans, and the Christians believed that Jesus' tomb was what? Empty. You know the, the scripture we read said that he's no longer there. He's risen. Okay? Number two. More than 500 people saw the risen Jesus. I will, I will read them and then I will use the scripture to copulate it. Right? It said more than 500 people saw the risen Jesus. Many saw him more than once and sometimes in groups of hundreds of people. Am I too fast? Okay. Number three. Or let me say number two again so that you can write because you are writing. This, this is a teaching. More than 500 people saw the risen Jesus. Two, the second evidence. You know we are talking about resurrection as an event now. By the time we come to resurrection as life. Oh, I've, I've gone ahead of myself. We will now begin to apply it. So this one is, you may not necessarily have to apply but there are, I, I just want to bring us up to date. Some of us are rusty, okay? So I want to bring us up to date. You know, when pastor was talking the other time and he was talking about the purchase possession, I said, no, 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 pastor, don't go there yet. Please, don't, don't jump. Let's do line upon line. Praise the Lord. And so more than 500 people saw the risen Jesus. Many saw him more than once and sometimes in groups of hundreds of, hundreds of people. Number three, only the actual resurrection of Jesus could account for the changed lives and beliefs of people like Saul, who is now called Paul. Number three, only the actual resurrection of Jesus could account for the changed lives and beliefs of people like Saul, who is now Paul, Jesus' early brother James, or the disciples. Jesus is what? earthly brother, earthly brother, Jesus' earthly brother, okay? Jesus' earthly brother, James. It is only the resurrection that will bring him in. Why? That's to say that while Jesus was alive and they were all playing, he will say, Jesus, Jesus, what's up? You know? Jesus, how far? What's going on? Our father is a carpenter. He didn't know that Jesus is of a different stock. 
He had no idea. He looks at Jesus and he says, you are my elder brother. I am hungry. Won't you give me food? How many of you have siblings? How many of you fought with your sibling? You've thrown a slab. You dashed him a slab. You gave him a knock. So all those kind of stuff happened. That's what I'm saying. It happened when Jesus was in that house. James, he said, look at you. You say you are my elder brother. You didn't even deliver on time. And Jesus, he said, ah, it's not your fault. Because Jesus was fully God and fully man. Am I communicating with you? So the only reason why James said, hey, is, is it true? So you mean all this while that this guy is my elder brother? I've despised him. I've not taken to heart his teachings. I've not followed him because a prophet is not honored in his home. All right? So that was when he suddenly realized that the scales fell off his eyes and he said, wow! This phenomenon is a true or is the truth that he's truly God. So that, that's true. My father is not his father. Joseph is not his father. I need to follow this guy. So he became, he became a reckless follower. He followed with every sense of caution thrown aside. When you say Jesus is your elder brother, he says no. Because most of the disciples that follow him that became apostles were not willing to be buried. They were, not, they were not willing to even be crucified the way Jesus was crucified. Some of them say, crucify me upside down. I am not worthy of the kind of crucifixion you gave to Jesus. That is how much these guys revered and referenced their dealings and their work with Jesus. Am I communicating with you? So, um, number, number four. Jesus' resurrection explains how the church spread rapidly all um, rapidly against all odds and against all hostility. Jesus' resurrection explains how the church spread rapidly against all odds and against all hostility. The church was the church in the days of the first apostles, all right, came under an intense attack. When you, when you would have thought, uh, had imagined that the church is being annihilated, that was when the church was expanding. You see, we, we need to understand that it's in the season of persecution when the body begins to go through persecution. That is when you begin to experience God's expansion. There is this undying desire. There is this undying hunger that comes upon people and they are willing to push forward the boundaries of the kingdom. I remember in the days, um, not to, I think last year, somewhere in Niger State, Niger State to be precise, that's around Mokwa in Nigeria. One of the missionaries that we look out for and we pray and support sent some pictures to Prophet Ayojaja. He was in a hold, all right? The Boko Haram guys came and attacked the church on Friday. Somebody say Friday. On Friday. So he escaped with a couple of people and they went into a place like a dungeon and they hid themselves there. You would have thought that they should not come out on Sunday to hold service. Is that not so? Yeah. I was in Lagos and I'm saying, man of God, please just make sure you are in a safe place. Remain in that hold. Don't go out. He said yes. And on Sunday, they sent us pictures of Sunday service. And by the time they got there, there were dead bodies. They met dead bodies of some of the people that were killed. They moved those dead bodies and still had Sunday service. Now, that is what we call Christianity. Christianity, Christianity is not this thing that we do. We wear suits and jackets. Yes, sir. And we stay in the hall. We don't know what is going on. In, there are other cities... Huh. I had to think and rethink. I gave my life to Christ in the northern region of Nigeria. So we were not taught motivational preaching. We were taught that we can die anytime. We share the grace in fellowship and my pastor will say, I see you when I see you, if we see at all. 
We were taught to stay exemplary as Christians because we can die anytime. But we still come to say, Father, in the name of Jesus, let your purpose preserve us. But as touching death, there is none of us, none of us, none of us were afraid of death. Death was not a phenomenon to be afraid of because our pastor already told us and taught us from the pages of scripture, Christians don't die. Christians don't die. They sleep. We don't die. And I will show you. It's all captured in resurrection. All right? So in the midst of that hostility, that was when the church began to expand. That was when the likes of Philip, Stephen, Peter's evangelistic endeavor, Anas, our brother, Barnabas. That was when we began to hear names that we've never heard. We were familiar with just 12 and the 120. The Bible called them 120. Let me say the 120. They never mentioned the names of the 120. They will say the 12 and the 120. But at the time, the frontier of the church was to expand. It did by persecution. So in the midst of persecution, when the church is going to emerge, you will see new breed. You will see new breed. Like COVID. COVID gave back to a new breed. When COVID was silencing some voices that became noise makers, it raised new voices. You see, COVID was a phenomenon. COVID reduced all the pastors to equal rank. First, senior apostle, venerate high, high, venerate high level teachers. We were all leveled together because no matter how anointed you are, you could not leave your house to teach on the pulpit. That's one. Number two, all our members became global members. You no longer can, could say, why did you go to Mount Zion Church? You are a rebellious son. If I'm a father, where's my Hannah? All sons and all daughters, am I communicating with you? All sons and all daughters became global members. In other words, number three, they now have capacity to choose yeah. who to listen to. Uh -huh. So when they now put on YouTube and they say, ah, my father, this one, it doesn't, I have escaped. Purum. He now goes to RCN. Yeah. And the spiritual father said, did you watch the meeting today? Say, ah, daddy, it is well. <laughs> hey, daddy, daddy. Daddy, it is where well. blessings to you, Daddy. I, I, I'm going to send my offering now. I know they are used to offering. But the moment they hear offering, say, God bless you, God bless you, God bless you. Uh, you, are, you are his son. But he didn't know that COVID has revealed his deficiency, has revealed his lack for teaching. Because a shouting church can never raise a strong people. A celebration church can never raise disciples. Ah, I've got a feeling everything's gonna be all right. Bam, 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 bam. Bam! Touch three, four, five people. Tell them the anointing is here right now. Receive, receive. You will keep receiving. You will never, you will never achieve what God has called you to achieve. You were not called to be fed. You were not called to be fed. Hmm? You were not called to be spoon fed. You are called to be trained and be sent out. Every church is a ground and a pillar for sending people. That's what it should be. That all of us will be trained adequately and then we will step out and represent the interests and the burdens of God. Ladies and gentlemen, brothers and sisters in Zambia, should I ask you a question? How many of you have prayed and said, God, trouble me with your body? How many of you have prayed that way? How many of you have seen a sinner and you are troubled and you said, I, I can't have my rest and my peace until this territory is taken over by God? How many of you have prayed in your, in your street and when you were going to work, you suddenly saw a bar and a club center 
that was just open. You looked at it, nothing crossed your mind, nothing pricked your spirit that, oh my God, another Sodom is about to be established here. I will reject it. And you took, you made an effort. You, you, you took a front for God and went there one night when nobody saw you and you said, Father, in the name of Jesus Christ, I am not only shutting down this place, I am asking that, oh God, they pack out of this place. How many of you, if you have not bared the burdens of God, if you have not borne the burdens of God, you are, you are celebrating resurrection as an event. It's an event. You are celebrating resurrection as an event. Hey, pastor, happy Easter. You know, maybe you came from a family line like me. We were not privileged to eat rice and chicken. We eat it once in a month. So it's a bait for going to church. So you know Easter day, you are going to have some time. You are going to have a spa treatment. You're going to take your wife to somewhere. So it's Easter celebration. Can I say something to you? The truth is you didn't celebrate Easter as a reality. You just had it as an event. You are taking your wife to the spa, but a day before you were, you were with a girl. You were cutting some runs. Let's say, honey, let me take you to the spa. What, what spa? On Easter day. Don't, don't even say you are celebrating Easter. Because you are part of the people giving Jesus bad name. You are part of people giving Jesus bad name. He's not a reality. He's an event. And many Christians, Jesus is an event. Back home, when they want to line the name of thieves, you will see 10 Christians before you will see one Muslim. Gabriel, Daniel, <laughs> Jeremiah, Isaiah. Then they will now say, Kabiru. <laughs> Everything about Christ begins to come to us as an event. So it's in the midst of that hostility, Paul breathing hard that I want to take out the church. He said, ye have heard of my former conversation, how that I wanted to destroy and break the church. But you know when Jesus who resurrected appeared to him, he said, Paul, Paul, why thou persecutest me? And he said, who art thou? No, let me complete it like apostle will say it. He said, it is hard to kick against the brick, apostle says, the barbed wire. It is hard because no matter how you want to persecute the church, the front of the church, the strength of the church is in persecution. What you didn't understand was that the New Testament church was exemplifying the Old Testament people in Egypt because Exodus chapter 1 said, the more they press hard on them, the more they multiplied, the more they expanded. So persecution for a child of God is a ground to stretch, to stretch your muzzle. I, am I communicating with you? Uh, this one, when, you, when, when something happened to you, you'll be crying. Your pastor will say, I say it is well. You say, pastor, I feel like dying. You have not seen death. You are calling death. If you see death, can you stand? Pastor, I feel like dying. Raising a bunch of emotional people. We are no longer sensitive to the things of the spirit. Any punch. Hmm. Correction. Rebuke. And the Bible says, if you are not rebuked, you are a bastard. It is he whom the father loves that he chastises. So in the season of persecution, that is when you see the reality of what? Resurrection. It's demonstrated in the resurrection. Am I communicating with you? So we are talking resurrection as an event. Jesus' resurrection explains how the church spread rapidly against all and against all what? Hostility. The final one. A number of Jesus' disciples died as martyrs because they thought that Jesus was resurrected. None of the disciples renounced belief in the resurrection. Did it occur to you that none of the disciples 
ever renounced. Again in Nigeria, a lady, um, Boko Haram raided a school. And when they raided the school, captured everybody, and they said, we are going to release all of you if you renounce Jesus. And one girl, one girl was not released, even though ransom was paid. You know why she was not released, ma'am? She refused to renounce Christ. When the others came, they were the ones telling the story. So we were not aware. Nigeria, Nigerians were not aware that this was what happened behind the scene. Why was this girl not released? What's her name? Can you remember the name of that girl? She was not released because she refused to renounce Jesus. She stayed back. She went through molestation, went through all kinds of things, and we started having letters that she had given birth. She was captured from secondary school. And you are a Christian because you want to have a higher GPA in school. You are being threatened. And I said, this Jesus, I don't know when he will appear. And you compromise. You are a working class person. Compromise is so easy. We have been taught the gospel that takes away suffering. We have been taught the gospel, a pseudo gospel. A gospel that says that God does not deal with us like this. If we are God's children, we don't go through things like this. A gospel that says to us that we obey God only when it's convenient. A gospel that correction is now a serious matter because you are seeing one or two manifestations of the anointing upon your life. So when you look at the resurrection, he gave credence to the strength of Christ by the lifestyle of the disciples. The lifestyles of the disciples gave credibility to the things that happened in the ministry of Jesus. They were willing to die. They were willing to be martyred. They were willing to be roasted in sun. Are you aware? Let me give you a shocker that at some point when there was darkness in the Roman Empire, they bring Christians and light them up during the night so that they can see. So I'm saying to you what you call bush, is it bushfire? It was human beings they were using. That is what the power of resurrection can do. Not could do, can do because the power of resurrection in the old, the power of resurrection in the New Testament is also the power of, of, of resurrection in our own day and time. So Jesus' resurrection can be seen from the standpoint of an event. That is why a Muslim can teach CRK. And when he teaches CRK, he will touch this topic. And yet there is no impact on his soul. Because as at the time he was teaching, he was not teaching the reality of resurrection. He's teaching resurrection as an event. And many Christians, most Christians, are locked up. Their life is hinged on an event, not on a reality. Because a reality is what you have seen. A reality is what you have heard. A reality is what your hands have handled. A reality is what you have become. Your becoming as a Christian is in the reality that you have touched. So 1 Corinthians chapter 15. First Corinthians chapter 15 from verse 1. 
Moreover, brethren, I declare unto you the gospel which I preached. I declare unto you the gospel which I preached unto you, which also ye have received, and wherein ye stand. So number one, when you receive the gospel, you will stand. Your standing is in your ability to receive the gospel. What is the gospel? The gospel is the good news. Hmm? Hey God. What is the gospel? The gospel is the good news. And I am not ashamed of the gospel. For daring is what? Is the power of God. And daring is righteousness revealed. So the gospel. Hmm? Is the good news. The gospel reveals the righteousness of God. Somebody say the righteousness of God. So when you say you are not ashamed of the gospel, you are saying that you are actually reaching down and touching the righteousness of God. What is righteousness? Righteousness is the ability to stand before God without inferiority or fear. When you stand before God, I beg your pardon. Righteousness is the ability to stand before God without inferiority, fear, and condemnation. How many of you, when I don't know if you were like me when you were growing up, and you come to a place and they say, let us pray. And they say, Father, before we pray, I want us all to confess our sin. Sin consciousness. And I say, Lord, no, 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 no. He doesn't know how to pray. Father, in the name of Jesus, you pray a very pious prayer. You pray a very beggarly prayer. Because you are not too sure if you are righteous or not. You know, um, the Bible says that uh, if we say we do not sin, we call God a lie. That's not, that's not how to apply the scripture. When a righteous man appears, he's not sin conscious. When you are righteous before God, there is no inferiority. There is no inferiority complex. There is no fear. And there is no condemnation. Because the boldness we have received is in three dimensions. We have received boldness to approach the throne of grace. We have received boldness to speak to our generation. We have received boldness to smash the head of Satan. That is a three-dimensional rule of boldness that you have. You have boldness to approach God. You have boldness to speak with God. And you have boldness to smash the head of Satan. You also have boldness to lay demand on the purpose that God has given you. Lord, the hour has come. Glorify your son now because your son has glorified you. John chapter 17 verse 1. I have boldness to ask God to give me grace to fulfill my purpose. Am I communicating with you? And I have boldness to approach the throne of grace without condemnation, without inferiority complex. How then do I know I am not righteous? He said, for if anyone sin, we have an advocate with the Father. So if I come to prayer, Lord, I thank you. Jesus, I just want to thank you. Thank you for giving us a space in Lagos. Thank you, oh God Almighty, for reaching out to us. As you are praying, the advocate will speak in your heart. Austin, stop. I'm not happy with you. I'm not happy with you. Go and speak with your wife. Resolve that quarrel. I'm not receiving this prayer. Resolve this quarrel. Not that. Every time you come to the presence of God, Father, forgive me for I am a sinner. Ah, Lord, I'm a sinner. Are you a sinner on Monday, sinner on Tuesday, sinner on Wednesday, sinner on Thursday, and sinner every day? No, 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 no. We are not sinners. We are righteous men. For he who knew no sin became sin for us that we might be the righteousness of God. All right? So I am the righteousness of God through Christ. So if there is sin and I want to come to the Lord, so you hear things like the sin of omission and the sin of commission. Yeah. If you are a Christian, why should you differentiate sin? <laughs> now there is a sin of omission. The sin you committed that you don't know. Is there a sin you committed that you didn't know? Please talk, talk to me. Is there a sin you committed that you didn't know that it was Satan that sinned it for you? <laughs> Pastor, I mistakenly kissed the man. I mistakenly kissed the man. Didn't you open your mouth? <laughs> Pastor, I fell. What do you call, what's your definition of folly? Pastor, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I, I mean, I, I fell today. 
I, I, I fell. I, I committed fornication today, so I fell. I fell. Is that how you fall? <laughs> you use your hand. Somebody say your hand. Yes. To your belt. <laughs> you pulled the belt. Somebody say one. one. You unbuckled it. Somebody say one. one. You pulled it out. Count with me. You opened the button of your trousers. You pulled the zip. You pulled the trouser. You pulled the boxers. And then when you were done, you began to wear everything back. And you said you fell. Is that falling? No. Huh? We only know resurrection as an event. So he said, it is this gospel that makes us to stand and the gospel is the word of God. The gospel is the good news. What is the good news? The good news is that once upon a time there was a man his name is Emmanuel. Yeshua, God with us, stayed and walked this earth as a man. Even though he was God, bankrupted himself so that he can bankroll salvation. And when he bankrupted himself, he became the son of man so that the sons of men can become the sons of God. That was the exchange that took place and that is the good news. How then will I attain unto salvation? How then, I mean, will I attain unto resurrection? I will attain unto resurrection by the good news of Jesus that came and died and resurrected. And once I believe in my heart that Jesus died, then I come into that reality. I accept it. And once I accept it, I accept the structure and the governing rules of what resurrection brings. The governing structure, the rules, the laws, the, 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 the value system that this resurrection brings is what I embrace. So Paul said, moreover brethren, I declare unto you the gospel which I preach unto you, which ye also have received and wherein you stand. Do you know the gospel, what Paul calls the gospel? Galatians chapter 1, let me show you, it's not part of my note, but let me go there. Because God is laying that on my heart. Galatians chapter 1. And let us see what Paul is calling his own gospel. Galatians chapter 1. Okay, I have some good time. I really want to make this to stand alone so that tomorrow I'll go to the second side. So, Galatians 1 verse 11. But I certify you, brethren, I assure you, Pastor Mpankwe, the gospel which was preached of me is not after man. This is the gospel. The gospel that has not its origin in man. I certify you, brother. I assure you, Philip, I assure you that the songs that I sing are not given to me by man. We tweak in church. We tweak. We tweak, we tweak, we tweak. The gospel of musicians, we tweak, we tweak. It's as if there are no dance in the spirit. It's as if there are no music in the spirit. We convert on holy songs. We bring them into church. The same beat, the same rhythm, but different lyrics. What you are telling us is the lyrics, I say, uh, ladies and gentlemen, don't mind the lyrics. Don't mind these lyrics. This rhythm is good. That is why we brought it in church. And if you cannot do club, you do church. Somebody say you do church. You are a thief. You didn't enter by the door. You entered by the window. If you entered by the door, that is Jesus, you would have been trained. That there are things that are original in this kingdom. So I assure you that this gospel that I preach is not man. 
So you will hear Paul said, when I came to you, I made up my mind not to know anything except Christ and him crucified. First Corinthians chapter 2. The reason is because I don't want your wisdom to stand in the wisdom of men, but that you are established in the faith. So the gospel is the word of God. Now, what does that mean? Can Reverend Umpank will preach a message and I preach it? Yes. Once that message is centered on Christ, I can preach it. And when I'm preaching it, I will give him honor that this thing I'm about to share with you people. I got it from Zambia when he was preaching. He spoke a word and he hit me. I wrote it down. But by the second time I want to talk about it, I no longer need to give credit to him because freely has he received. Freely have I received. And the desire is that Jesus be preached. But you see, you don't see people who copy gospel. What we copy are trends. We don't copy gospel. Exactly, we don't copy gospel. What we copy now is trend. What is trending? What is trending? Everybody has become lazy and we are only chanting. Because you know that when you pray, chant will come. So you don't want to do due diligence anymore. So when we, when we call choir to sing, and you want to sing a song that has, what do you call those things? Is, is he? Stanzas. Stanzas. You see them chewing mouth. They are lazy. They are lazy. Well, if you want to chant, we shout hallelujah, amen, 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 amen. They can do amen, 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 amen. For five, for five hours, no problem. Keyboard is going on like this. Just lazing around. Because we don't want to stand the gospel. And, and you see, one of the things that happen in a teaching environment, choir, listen to me very well. Listen to me. When you sit under an anointed teacher, you are supposed to be tuned to receive his teachings in sound. The choir, the choir department. You will be tuned. Go and listen to Ron Kenoli. He will say, when my pastor was teaching, I received this song. Listen to Don, Donny McLaughlin. He will say, when my pastor was teaching, I received this song. Out of the teaching, what comes to them is a song. Is, is, a, is the word of the Lord. A music. So, you will see that their songs has traversed time. Anytime you sing the when it's fresh. But this your chanting is only for a, a, a season. Hey, hey, hey. Meanwhile, I don't know who sang it. I, I, I hope it's, Theo, it's Theophilus. If it's Theophilus, I'm good. Okay? If it's my, bro, it's, if it's my brother's chanting I'm talking about, then I'm good. All right. So, so, so you see that he said, this thing, I do not satisfy it. I satisfy you that my gospel was not, that, that I preached is not by man. I don't follow trend. Boys follow trend. Sons follow God. Boys. But sons. Sons, sons of the kingdom, they follow God. Yes, there are men that have no business with the social media. God will tell them, I'm not sending you there yet. Stay back. <laughs> but what that is what is happening now. If I'm not on YouTube, it's not that it looks as though I'm not doing ministry. And God says, No, son, I am hiding you. I'm keeping you. Let me build character in you. When I build character on you and you are on Facebook and you're on social media, and a lady says to you, Hey guy, can you talk? <laughs> Don't laugh yet. Do you know you are juicy? And then they send you a funny picture. You have not built character in God. 
you were engaged, you are gone. Then that same lady will be waiting for you for the days that God will bring visibility and she will bring out your chart. If you don't give me one million dollars, I'm going to spill. Scandal is about to open. But you didn't respond when God was saying it is not time. I hope as you are clapping, the burdens of the Lord are dropping in your heart. You know I'm in Zambia, so I don't know how you do it here. I don't know if everything you clap about. So that's, that's why I'm following you like this. I'm, I'm trying to understand the culture. Because when I was in Brazil and I was preaching, they stood up and they were, and, and, and the pastor said, um, that's the anointing, that's the anointing. So I want to assume that your clapping is not excitement, but the anointing. Am I communicating with you? All right? So, so they follow trend. He said that I don't follow trend. I follow the dealings of God. But I certify you, brethren, that the gospel which was preached of me is not after man. 12. For I neither receive it of man. Can you see? Somebody say source. Help me say source. Where I am preaching from is not from the, is not from the message I got from you. The source, if I preach your message, is because God impressed it on my heart. Not because I felt, yeah, I've got something to tell my church on Monday. Wow. This Apostle Aramis message was powerful. I think if I preach it on Monday, the whole place is going to be shaking. Gabo, para gabo. And then you appear. No, no dealings, no prayers, no, no, no fellowship with God. No intimacy with God. Please write this down. Any preacher that preaches without praying is a wicked man. Any psalmist that sings to God's people without seeking the face of God is a wicked psalmist. Any instrumental, instrumentalist that plays without seeking the face of God but depend on skill is a wicked man. You are wicked. I can show you. It's in the Bible. The Lord built a tabernacle outside. Somebody say outside. Outside the tent. He built a tabernacle. No. Outside, outside the tabernacle of the congregation. He built a tent outside. And it was called the tent of meeting. That is, if you are in here, all of us are together, and you want to meet with the Lord, there is a tent outside for you to go in and speak to the Lord. Nobody went there, only Moses. And then, you will study the life of Moses. Moses never came out to speak to God's people until God spoke to him. Is that correct? Then let's come to Jesus. Jesus. Hours upon hours, Jesus will perform miracle and he will tell his disciples, go, I am coming. He will go back to God. What is my scorecard? How did we do today? We are going to the next, let's go to the other side. He said to them, go to the other side. He didn't follow them to the other side. He went for prayers. But you have mastered the terrain. You know that when you come and you say, hey, 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 hey everybody's emotion will be tickled. Or you know that Minister Philip Azale is going to sing. When he creates that atmosphere, you will come. In that atmosphere. Once the atmosphere has been created, you take the mic. Because you are a lazy pastor. You don't study. And the Bible said, study to show yourself approved unto God, not unto men. Your first audience in Bible study is God. Your first audience. When you sit down to study, he said, be approved unto God, not men. So, I certify, neither did I receive of man, neither was I taught it, but by what? The revelation of Jesus. So, I got my teaching, it's first hand. 
It was delivered unto me by the revelation of Jesus. Jesus unveiled himself to me. Jesus opened himself to me. Jesus made me see who he is. And the way for me to have the revelation of Jesus is by intimacy. is sexual interaction. You know I'm married for 14 years. And I love my wife. But for me to prove to you that I love my wife, and I bring her here that I want to show you that I love my wife, please permit my example. Because this is how the Lord taught me intimacy. Can I make out with my wife here as a proof to you that I love her? Huh? So why do you think God will give you precious things on the surface? Why? You say you love him, you love him, but you are a copycat. You cannot stay with him in the inside because intimacy is enter into me and see. Intimacy is come into me and see. Look, I am deep, but if you keep coming, I'll keep taking you into my depths. I'll keep traveling with you into depth. That is why I told you earlier. You don't know I was setting you up. When I said it takes a lot for one for a man to stay with one woman. It's intimacy that makes you stay. You can't prove to the world that you love Jesus by being a talkative. You have spoken and spoken and we see nothing happening. Your life is a complete divergent of what you are saying. He said, what I preach is a lifestyle, my brother. What I preach is what was handed over to me for there is a part that the liars don't know. There is a part in Christianity that your pastor cannot give to you. It must be handed over. That which was from the beginning. That which we have heard of. Our eyes have seen and our hands have handled even of the word of life. The word of life can be handled. We have babies everywhere. The Bible says, as babies desire the sincere milk of the word. Many of us are still in the milk of the word. How about the scripture that says strong meat belong to the matured? Why are you not moving from milk to strong meat? You can't move to strong meat when there is no intimacy. He said, the gospel that I preached, I was not taught by man. Excuse me. Didn't a pastor teach me? I was raised by a pastor. And I'm still being trained by my spiritual father, Apostle Arame. But the end goal is that the teachings and the trainings must end in Christ. My journey, he said, imitate me as I imitate Christ. I want to ask you a question. If I dip my feet on your steps, will I end in Christ? If you take off your step and I dip my feet in and I keep following you, will I end up in Jesus? Will I end up, if I follow you as a psalmist and you keep singing and I follow your singing and singing, will I end in Christ or end in the club? It takes revelation to follow Jesus. It takes revelation to appropriate resurrection. I was not taught by man. The time is confusing me. Is this my time? Okay. I was not taught by man. But Pastor Mpankwe is your teacher. He's training you. Even Paul that is saying here that he was not taught by man. When the revelations of God kept coming to him, you will see the beauty of interdependence in Galatians chapter 2. When the dealings were coming, he said, boy, I need to compare notes with somebody else. So he said, when they sensed the grace of God on me, they extended the right hand of fellowship to me. In other words, Peter, Paul, um, Peter, James, John, when he went to them, he said, God has been dealing with me like this. My own is when I gave my life to Christ, something landed me and drove me to the wilderness. Was that your case? He was asking them. I was in the island. I was in the island of Arabia. I don't know. And I receive abundance of revelation. Do you know that Paul kept those revelations for many years? 
You now, if you just have one decision, say, hey, guy, where are you? Take me to the studio. Last night when I was praying, the Holy Ghost. And then there will be a keyboard. Ba -da -da the Holy Ghost. And I said the Holy Ghost. And then when you are done, we say, brother, this thing that you are saying, some of the things you are saying are not gelling up with Bible. You say, hey guy, you don't have anything to tell me because I received this from Jesus. Really? You received it from Jesus and we cannot sample it with scripture. We cannot judge what you are saying by scripture because you received it. The last time I checked, even demons spoke in tongues. And that's why the Bible says, don't try any man. It says, try all spirit. It's not man that we try. We try spirit. We do spirit test. Then we do character test. That one, you people don't, we don't do it anymore. Now, the spirit test we do is result. That's the test we do. Say, ah, Azale, I prophesied in Kenya. It came to pass. I prophesy in Brazil, it came to pass. A Brazil, I, I, I prophesy in Singapore, it came to pass. But all of those places he mentioned to you, everywhere he went to, he slept with women. No character test. But what do you test? Result. Uh, he's a man of God. Can't you see the miracles he's doing? The Bible says, by faith, the elders obtained good report. Not good result. But good report. That's one. Number two. When we talked about application and ordination, it was not based on power. It was based on character. The pastor must be a man of one wife. He must not have unruly children. They didn't say he must be a man with anointing. Base leadership in the body is character based first. Let me tell your neighbor, it's character based first. Leadership in the body of Christ first must be character based. So, when you look at that scripture, he said, This gospel that I preach, and that is why he said he's not ashamed of the gospel. Why can you be ashamed of something you receive first hand? Yes, sir. Why can you be afraid of what you receive firsthand? Meanwhile, God can raise you up. Like he said, I'm going to turn this place into a teaching arena, a training arena. God can raise you up that way so that you can train people. You see, oh my God. Sometimes when my father is teaching, Apostle Arame, when he's teaching, you know what his teaching does to me? He will hit a note in the spirit as I'm following. As he hits that note in the spirit, something will open for me entirely. I will pick my, my, my tablet and I will start writing. And I can write 30 pages in one hour. A message has been developed right there. So, as he's teaching me, the Lord is bringing revelations in my heart. Who, who does he happen to hear? If it happens to you, engage it. That is how to grow. If you don't, you say, I'll come back to it later. You will forget. It is called spiritual waste of administration. When God administers something to you and you are not engaging it, you are wasting it. You will not remember. So I stay there. I write. I write. I write. At that time, you are coming to truth that have been handed over to you. He's teaching territorial engagement. And then you, you are seeing how the believer should now engage that territory. He's teaching righteousness. And then you, you are seeing what hinders the righteous men from manifesting as righteous men. He's teaching the anointing and how to release the anointing. And then you, you are seeing the governing structures for the anointing. You see... He's teaching. That his teaching is opening you up to chambers. He's opening you up to doors. He's opening you up to new emphasis. He's opening you up to opportunity. Spirit that he, the speaker, is not even touching at all. You know why? At that time, the Holy Ghost 
comes to teach you. He said, I tell you that this revelation that I'm ministering to you, this gospel, I am not speaking to, to you because it came from man. Neither was I taught it by man, but it was given to me by the revelation of Jesus Christ. How many of you have prayed and said, Lord, teach me the Bible? And you have slept and you saw a pastor. You see, that man that you saw in the dream is not the man. God used a figure you know. The Holy Spirit used a figure you know that you can listen to to start teaching you. Oh, there was a time in my life in the city of Sokoto when I said the Lord should teach me the Bible. I said, Lord, please open the Bible to me. And the reason why I prayed that prayer was when I came to the place where I said, and the book was handed over and the book was sealed and nobody could open it. And there was burning in the heavens and there was crying and I, John, also was crying. And he said, son of man, cry no more. For there is a man that is worthy to open this book and to unseal it. And then I said, Lord, please, Bible has seals. Open Genesis to me. Open Revelation to me. Because of my lifestyle, Pastor Pankwe, before I gave my life to Christ, right? I couldn't read Songs of Solomon. Every time I read Songs of Solomon, I felt like a man. Because I hear things like breast. And I remember breast in my clubbing days. You know, we're together, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. <laughs> you were the DJ and I was, the, I was the dancer. Yeah? And I remembered all of those. So I stopped reading that book. Because I don't want trouble. I stopped reading that. You know, I'm not a fake pastor. I tell you how it is in my spirit. Right? And one day, the Holy Ghost came to me. He said, son, Songs of Solomon is a typology of the person of the Christ. I said, eh. The moment I heard Songs of Solomon is a typology of what? Of the person of Christ. I now went back to read Songs of Solomon. My body was no longer doing me gish bows, bass bows. You know what I'm saying? I was no longer feeling strange. So when I saw the breast, I saw the word of God. Because the breast feeds a child so that the child can be nourished. When I see the breast, I see the word of God. Can you see the transformation my mind needed to go through in order to come to be like the Christ as far as the songs of Solomon is concerned? Am I communicating with you? So I no longer was feeling bass, 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 bass. I was now seeing Jesus and I was now saying, oh my God, have you read songs of Solomon chapter 4 before? Oh my, go and read it. If you read it with an unregenerated mind, you will, you will feel like fornicating. But when you are regenerated and the, the, the chamber of that scripture, you will realize that the book of Genesis is Christ buried. Exodus, Christ buried. Deuteronomy, Christ buried. Leviticus, Christ buried. Then you move to Mal Malachi, Christ buried. Then when you come to Matthew, John, Mark, Luke, Christ revealed. Christ revealed. So the Old Testament is Jesus buried. And the New Testament is Jesus unveiled. So the story of the Old Testament is what you are seeing. It looks as though God is more real in the Old Testament. Tell me the truth. Don't you feel that way? Don't lie. Don't you feel that way? Say, ah, in the Old Testament, I say, God that answers by fire. He answers by fire. But here, with God, there is plenty of mercy. What's the difference? What's the difference? It's resurrection. It's resurrection. It's resurrection. Let me begin to round up. The history. Resurrection as an event. So I take you back. We've, 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 we've defined the gospel, right? That is a revelation of Jesus. Is the good news of Jesus. And Romans chapter 10 from 9 to 10 gives us an entrance on how to get the salvific um, um, experience. Right? Now, go back to 1 Corinthians chapter 15. Because all the points I raised, I want to tie it using 1 Corinthians chapter 15. Are you being blessed? Or oh, this is that is too hard. Uh, you want success stories and go catch um, as you go today 
you are going to receive a miracle money. Is that what you want? Huh? Miracle money? Huh? All right. Moreover, brethren, I declare unto you the gospel which I preach unto you, which is which also ye have received, and wherein you what? You stand. By which also ye are what? Saved. So I told you I'm not ashamed of the gospel, for it is what? The power of God, all right? And it is the gospel that brings salvation, right? And then it is the gospel that reveals righteousness. The other thing that the gospel reveals is the power of the age to come. Immortality. Are you with me? The gospel reveals immortality. It, it reveals, and that is in the book of Timothy. It reveals to us the power of the age to come. It reveals the power of immortality. That power that all of us, we have a foretaste of it now, and at a point we are no longer going to die. Praise the Lord. In fact, this clothes you are wearing, you will not need it. The, the nag and the quest for wearing designers, you will no longer need it. You will not look at pastor and say, oh, that shoe, where did he get it from? Is that D and G? Is that what are the designers you have here in, in, in Zambia? You want to deny me now? <laughs> eh? What's the name? Young Firos. Okay. Young Firos. Maybe you take me there so that I get some. <laughs> right? You know, there's this shoe that they wear these days that is very big. I don't know, booty kind of stuff. You know, and all of that. So, so um, you 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 come to that place where you begin to understand the power of immortality, right? I mean, you have tasted of it, but a day is going to dawn on us where all of us will be together. You will kiss lion. You will not be afraid. You will say, "Lion, come here." He will not roar. He will say, "Me, yeah, come. I'm 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 talking. I'm calling you." You will no longer have mosquitoes. You will not need insecticide. Mosquito will go back to feed on, on, on nectar. Nothing will bite you anymore because you are now in the age of immortality. But God is giving you a foretaste of it by the imprint of the Holy Spirit that is indwelling you now. Am I communicating with you? So that season, and all of these things are made possible by resurrection. He said, by which also ye are saved. So it is by my gospel that you are standing on that you were saved. What is saved? Salvation. What is salvation? Rescue. A rescue mission and most of us are basing our life on that new um, um, new creation reality we have refused to exit reality to responsibility we have refused to bear responsibility for the kingdom we are still giving out to God as sons and daughters that are parasitic in nature parasitic in nature you are dependent on God how about God depending on you on earth Challenges until he learns peace in the midst of storm. I will trouble my head. I used to worry a lot. And the way you know that I am not all right is when I'm broke. The way you know, I mean, the way you know I'm, I'm not all right, when I'm broke, I shout. Yes! So, my mood is controlled. When, I'm re when I have money, I come to my wife, hey, babe, what's up? <laughs> and then when there is no money, she say, AJ, I say, please, 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 please. What is it? And then one day God told me, he said, you don't have joy. You have happiness. He said, you don't, he said, you don't have joy, son. You have happiness and you are in trouble. Many of you looking at me here, you, are, you don't have joy. Many of you. Sadly to say, you don't. You know why? When you have lajon, that's when you are happy. When you have money. Pastor! Pastor! <laughs> Pastor, when do we have Rehaza? But when there is no money, reha what? <laughs> Did you say rehabilitation? Me, I need, I don't need rehab, and I need rehabilitation. I need, I need, I need to go to rehab where they will give me some money. Once money come again, pastor, pastor. Sorry, I didn't make it last week, but this week I'll be there at four o'clock. The meeting is six o'clock, but you'll be there by four because you have money now. So you have happiness. But do you know what the Bible said concerning your life? It said it is by joy that we fetch from the well of this saved salvation. You don't keep fetching from the well of salvation with happiness. Happiness is physically related. It's tied to materiality. 
joy is tied to the spirit. It's a well. He said you fetch from the well of salvation. So joy is the handle. Somebody say joy. joy. Is the handle for spiritual expressions in God. So if I want to see God being expressed, I must be full of joy. In other words, if I am broke, I am full of joy. If I am rich, I am full of joy. Nothing determines my appearance. Nothing dictates how I look and how I speak. What dictates it is the joy of the Lord. Is the joy of the Lord. The joy of the Lord is what enhances the presence of God in the life of a Christian. So he said, by which ye also are saved. If ye keep in memory, in memory what I preached unto you. I want to ask you a question. From everything I said, what was he preaching unto them? This is how you, you know you've been clapping. I told you. <laughs> what has it, by which ye also are saved. If ye keep in memory what I have preached unto you, unless ye, be, unless ye have believed in vain. So there is something here that I need to keep. If I don't keep it and I don't have it in my memory, I will walk in vain. This one is for another time where they said to once say forever save. Huh? Keep this scripture. So what is this? What is this? What I have preached unto you is the gospel. Is the gospel. So if you want to see the reality of the resurrection, is the gospel. What is the gospel that I preached to you was not given to me by man. So the gospel is the message that Jesus brought. And what is the message that Jesus brought? The message that Jesus brought is that I am the son of God. I died so that you can become the son of God. I have stepped down the definition. What is resurrection? Resurrection is the squandering of the life of Jesus. That the life of Jesus was squandered by our sin. That's resurrection. What squandered, what killed Jesus is not man. What killed Jesus is sin. So the power of God, the life of God was squandered because of the sin of man. What is resurrection? Resurrection is that exchange that took place. That replaced my infirmity, which is the sin nature for the life of Christ. So he said, by which ye all, by which also ye are saved, if ye keep in memory. So there is this need for you to keep in memory. In memory. Does that not mean rehearsing? Does that not mean you should keep regurgitating? Huh? Does that not mean you should keep in, 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 in sight what you have received? That is why the Bible says that take heed. Let everyone that thinks he stands take heed lest he fall. You see, the antidote to lust is not praying in tongues. When you are being tempted, all right? No, not lost. Praying in tongues is part of the antidote. When you are being tempted by a woman or by stealing in government office, you don't say, I bind you. Kaborodo, kobora, baba, kaborada, kambamba. That was what Samson did. He never worked. The Bible say, flee every evil word appearance. So in this case, it is fleeing. Am I communicating with you? In physical evil appearance, it is fleeing. In spiritual demonic wall, it is standing. I've given you power above all demons. So you said, demon, come out. If a demon is manifesting here now, a lady is coming and said, I'm going to kill Reverend Austin right now. And she's coming from the back like this. And I said, Pastor Ipangwe, where are your security guys? Come and stand here. You see, you're already laughing. You now be say, oh, this guy does not have the practicality of what he's teaching. But if the person is coming and I say, <laughs> hey, <laughs> mm, 
I won't even give the person the benefit of what is your name. How many are you? May the Lord give you understanding. How many are you? Where are you coming from? For how long? No. When demons saw Jesus, they didn't talk. He bound them and said, get out. You don't need unnecessary publicity with demons. Bind, cast them out. In our meetings, when demons are speaking, apostles say, okay, I'm coming for you, I'm coming. Hey guys, let's go. When he's done, he say, are you tired now? Okay, leave in Jesus' name. Ah! And then the person will fall. But other people will say, oh no, the demon is here. Give her the mic. What is your name? My name is Abakariata. Where are you from? I'm from the river Nile of river Nile of Zimbabwe. Oh, from the river Nile. How many of you came? We are 10. You are just wasting time. The power of resurrection, when we were empowered, he said, these signs shall follow them that believe. In my name, they will cast out devils. They are meant to be casted out. We don't engage. We are not supposed to engage them in conversation. Cast the bastard out. Cast out that demon. Don't use him as entertainment. What you should use to bring glory to God is that there are deaf ears here they opened. Yes. There are blind eyes here they saw. There are, there, there are people who came in here with, oh my God, my greatest desire in life is to see transformed lives. Not miracles. Miracles is a way to bring people into the kingdom. Transformed life. You see a boy like me who was once a club boy, a drug dealer. Am I communicating with you? People like us, it took Jesus to bring us to the kingdom. I have seen power. So the only way you can bring me to this is that I will see a superior power. Am I communicating with you? So when, when you see, when I tell you my story, you will love God. There is only Jesus. Only Jesus. Only, I feel like crying. Only Jesus can transform this boy. Only Jesus. Only Jesus. Only him. That is the highest form of resurrection. That you were a bad boy. You were a drug dealer. You, 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 you even have no opportunity for life. How much more to have a dream? My dream was to go to the university and become a cultist. That was the, my dream. And you came into university as a child of God. Going to see my girlfriend on a bike. And the Lord encountered me and I gave my life to Jesus. It's only resurrection, the reality of it alone that can bring a man to his kneel. When people like you want to preach to me those days, I'll say, I want to go out with you. And I'll say, I, I, I have money. I just want to sleep with you. Then the lady will leave me alone and go. When we're in church like this, I go to church. That is why a sinner in church is better than a sinner outside. You see my own revelation now. Because that I was a sinner in church. But Jesus encountered me. A sinner that hears the gospel is far better than the one that doesn't hear at all. So I'm in church. I will sit here. And one of my babes will be with me there. And this side, one of my friends will be sitting with the second babe. And there are doors all around. I will tell him when they close, you go like this. From here, I would go out with this one. So on Sundays were the days of my baddest act. But when resurrection came, there was no father there. There was no mother. Resurrection encountered me on a bike. He came on the bike. Boom! After my parents had disowned me, my father said, you are no longer my son. Leave my house. And I was selling drugs. I had policemen on my bike on my payroll. I was making money and I was going to the club. I live a gangster life. I don't know how marks disappeared from my face. I had marks on my face, on my forehead. I had charms, amulets. But when the power of regression came, there are certain things that broke completely. But here again had to be the journey of transformation. I need to go through a makeover, not not, not a makeup. 
Because there's a difference between a makeup and a makeover. Yeah. My journey was a journey of a makeover. That God will have to, you will have to look at me and say, my God, God truly worked on this man. God truly can work. And if God can save Austin, he can save anybody. Allow resurrection power to become a reality. My God, you will see God swallowing up your weaknesses one after the other, one after the other, one after the other. The things that people said you cannot do, the things that people said you will not be able to attend to in God, you will gradually see yourself coming up. I told your pastor yesterday, the Lord said to me, son, revival is slow, but it is sure. And the greatest revival you can have is self-revival. That God will take you on a journey and begin to reveal himself to you. And I hope you know that the moment you say, Jesus, teach me, reveal yourself to me, he will take you on because you have, you have given him the right of way. You are saying to him, I want to experience the power of resurrection. I no longer want resurrection to be an event. I want to experience it. Give me next verse because that is where I'm rounding up now. Give me the next verse. Next verse, guys. Is the guy sleeping? Verse 3. Should I speak Zambian language? Holy Ghost, give me Zambian language now. Kabo Hade. Verse 3. Huh? The guy, maybe burden has come on him. Maybe burden has come on him. Verse 3, for I delivered unto, unto you first of all that which I also received. Pastor, that which I also what? Received. So he was taught by God the revelation of Jesus. For I delivered unto you first of all that which I also received. How that Christ died for our sins. How? According to scriptures. Not according to your experience. Because your experience is too small to give credit to scripture. It is scripture that gives credit to your experience. According to scripture. Jesus died according to scripture. The prescription of his death was encoded, enshrined in scripture. When we talked about the death of Jesus, when we talk about the birth and the death and the resurrection of Jesus, everything was captured in Torah in prophets, in Psalms, and in law. These are the three books that makes the Old Testament. I am saying to you that all of these three gave credence to the birth and the resurrection of Jesus. And he said, that is what I have what sent to you, how that he died according to scripture, verse, verse 5, and that he was seen of Cephas. Oh, what is Cephas? Who is Cephas? The high priest. The high priest has said they should go and lie. They should go and say that the body was stolen. He saw him. <laughs> that if we understand the power of our resurrection, governments will see, we see him. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. The high priests, they will see him. Yes, sir. I came into that revelation today where, this, where I studied in the room. When I saw, I said, oh, Kephas, that's the high priest. And God said, this is what happens when you bring my power to bear. But today, you think that the climax of our ministry is when presidents, when we, when we stand and snap with president, yes, then you will be the one to post it. Yes. I told my wife and I told my church, our ministry, far be it from me. I will, if I snap with Umpangwe, I will share it. If I snap with the governor, he will have to share it. Yes, sir. I know my office in God. If I speak with a minister in Ghana and we snap, it ends there. But if I snap with you, I'll put it on my status. Yes, Myself and Adzali. If I snap with a spiritual father, I'll put it. But when I snap with a high priest, 
a governmental nature, they will be the ones who say, oh, we thank God for the life of this man. That is when you are transforming lives. When you represent the kingdom and you know who you are in Christ, you were too beggarly. And it's because we don't have the, we don't know the reality of resurrection. He said, and then was seen of what? The twelve. Jesus. The resurrection is going to cut across government. It's going to cut across priesthood. It's going to cut across disciples. So I, my resurrection is supposed to be noised in the priest order. My resurrection is supposed to be noised. In among my disciples, are, are, am I, are, are, are you getting me? Resurrection is territorial in nature, it's territorial. The resurrection should be felt. Next verse after that, he was seen of above how many people? How many people at once? Of whom the greater part remain unto this present. But some are falling asleep. Next. After that, he was seen of James. Who is James? That's his brother. Are you getting all my points? I'm bringing the points together now. He was seen of who? James. That is brother that used to say, Jizo. Jizo. You know, send me a bee. You don't have my time. Mommy said you should take care of us. You are playing football. And you are hitting chairs that you want to deliver. And I'm hungry. Jesus, I need food. When Jesus died and resurrected, he said, Hey, resurrection changed his perception. From this is an ordinary man to this. So I've been living with an immortal person. I didn't know all this while. He, he, resurrection humbled him. Resurrection brought him from his high horse. He he was humbled. Men that have experienced resurrection are not proud. Men that have experienced resurrection, they don't talk as if they are the ones that manufactured the anointing upon their life. Say, you know how many years I fasted? Do you know how long I labored to get this anointed? There are people who don't pray like you. They are even far more anointed than you. Cristiano Ronaldo is a hard-working man. Messi is a talented man. May the Lord give you understanding. One works hard, hard. Messi is gifted, natural. He's anointed for what he's doing. He just, you know, he just, brrr. but this guy with gym, he's 36, he's still gymming, gymming. Messi doesn't do all of that. Messi is God gave him. So there are some of us, there are some of us that God just, he just looked at you, he said, take, take oratory. You, you know you're an orator. He said, take. Do you read dictionary? He just gave you. So when you stand, the words come together and you speak and everybody falls in love with you. When you talk, it's as if you are singing. But somebody we now want to practice Somebody that wants to do like you, we wake up in the morning, say maybe he drinks a lot of water, let me take some water. And then maybe he takes some honey and um, what's that thing that they mix? Honey and raw egg. Let me take it so that my voice will be seronious when I speak. And then he's laboring, but you are not even aware he's doing that. You just wake up in the morning, you study, and God gives utterance. Somebody say grace. grace. You see, this is not by fasting, this is not by praying, this is just a gift. And that is what resurrection has done. So, he said, after that he was seen of James, then of all the apostles. Next verse. Oh my. Next verse. Next verse. Next verse. Are you seeing Jesus there? Next verse. And last of all, he was seen of me also as one born out of due time resurrection had a futuristic coloration so when resurrection happened the 12 were there but that was not the end he was also seen i was also seen of him he also came to me i saw him as one that was born out of due 
time. And so resurrection does not end with the apostles. No, if it ended with the apostles, Paul will not testify. Other people said resurrection is not real. It's, hallu it's hallucination of Peter. That Peter was afraid. Others said no. Resurrection is not true. It's the hallucination of their disciples. And then they said no. But you know something? When Jesus was going to appear, he appeared to a woman first. You know why? Because as at that time, a woman's witness is, is, is immaterial in the Old Testament. When a woman stands to speak she's not she's not acquainted respect and she's not giving her her evidence is not admissible the feel is not strong enough but when jesus was going to appear he appeared first to the woman that he casted out seven demons a woman that had problems a woman that was broken and shattered a woman that was gone down and out but he took her molded her life and transformed her that was the woman he unveiled himself to and when he appeared and said this is me go and tell them that I have resurrected the woman became the first gospel preacher she was the first runner up for the kingdom she ran to the apostles and she said the master has risen do you want to know why because it's a phenomenon that only him chooses who can preach for him only him chooses only him chooses who will carry the resurrection message. Only him will carry the message. And he will say, take, go and tell your generation. I know you had seven demons, but take my resurrection message. Take it to the world. I know they will not respect a woman. But when I speak to you, I am speaking to you because I'm about to break a protocol in Zambia. When you stand to speak, it will be clear that the female folks have touched something. God is looking for the women that can stand regardless of their challenges regardless of their past and say Lord I am ready God is ready for a Paul a Paul a Paul a Paul a murderer a Paul a Paul are you seated and listening to me maybe you are a Paul in the making but right now everything about the gospel disdains you everything about Jesus you hate him because your father was a pastor and he was broke all through his life until he died so you said I don't want to be the son of a pastor I don't want to relate with pastoring but today I say to you just like he revealed himself to Paul will you allow him to reveal himself to you just as he revealed himself to Mary Magdalene will you allow him to reveal himself to you Jesus can take your life and turn it over Jesus can take your life and exchange it I don't know who I'm talking to tonight but it's a good place to say to God I am ready I am ready come for me my name is Austin I am reporting for duty my father and my God I've run for too long. I've run for too long. Tonight I come back. Somebody come back home. Resurrection power is beckoning on you. Resurrection power is calling you right now. Resurrection power is calling you. Somebody speak in tongues. Holler to God and tell him, Father, come. Father, come. Anoint me afresh. Anoint me afresh. Guide me with strength again. Come on, open your mouth and talk to Jesus. Wherever you are right now, talk to him. Talk to Jesus. Talk to him. I don't want resurrection as an event. I want it like Paul. A reality. A reality. Paul heard about the story. He never believed. When he encountered it, he encountered it. He said, I count everything as dunk. Everything I've received, everything I've encountered, I throw it away. Somebody cry to Jesus. Somebody cry to him. Receive that grace. Receive that grace. Say to Jesus, I come, I come. I come by the waters. I come by the waters. I come by the water of the Spirit. Tonight, Jesus, I come. I come crying to you. Let the reality come.
talk to Jesus talk to him people I want to see your face I want to touch your grace I want to see your face ah to know your way. I want to touch your grace. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Philip. Thank you. So I can, can leave your my days. days. I, I want to see you. Somebody tell him I want to see you. Oh, yeah, I'm giving you three minutes. I want to see three minutes and I will hand over the mic. If you want to see him, you oh, will see him. He will begin to face. encounter you. Jesus will begin to encounter you. I want to touch your grace. If you want to see Jesus, so I can tell him I am ready. I am ready. I, I am ready. Jesus, I am ready. I want to see your face. Just the way you are. All of us are Ruka Paradia Sunday. Ruka Le Pala. Legenda Kula Maria Tale. We want to see you, Lord. We want to know you to touch your grace so I can leave your name. I want to see you. I want to see you. Let the power of resurrection be real to me. I want to see you. Why are you looking for the dead? Why are you looking for the living among the dead? He is not here. He has risen. He has risen. I want to know your way. Jesus. I want to touch your Let your resurrection power come to a dollar. Let it be found in your dollar. Let there be utterance. Let there be power. New generation of new generation of preachers, new set of elders that will rise from among you, new set of elders that the Lord will raise, men that have encountered the resurrection power. I want to know you. That have encountered the resurrection power. We want to encounter Jesus. Somebody pray. Jesus, I want to see you. If you are real, I want to see you. My God, I want to see you. I want to see you. I want to play the keyboard and cancer be healed. I want to play the keyboard and demons cry out. I want to preach and the, oh my God, gangsterism is swallowed up. Jesus, I want to, oh my, oh my. I want to bring the word of the Lord to governments, to nations, to territories, the resurrection power, the resurrection power, power. And was seen of me. I want to see you, Lord. Know what Paul said that I may see him and the power of his resurrection be made conformable even unto his death. Resurrection begins when I die. A corn of wheat we abide alone until he falls to the ground and die, living out resurrection, living out resurrection. I don't want to preach resurrection. I want to live resurrection. I want to live resurrection. I want to embody resurrection. I want to embody resurrection. And live in me, oh God. And live in me, oh God. Let your strength come into me. Let your power come into me. Hey! I want to see you. Thank you, Father. By tomorrow, 
I will bring you to the next chapter of resurrection. And that is where we are going to take a journey. We are going to dive into what it means to be a believer. Because the reason why Christianity is Christianity is because there is one man. There is one spirit who became a man and died and is seated at the right hand of God as a man. Oh my God, Jesus went through transformation. Transformed from a spirit being unto a man because of resurrection. When he resurrected, you know it was not his spirit that resurrected. It was his whole body, everything. The spirit entered into him and quickened up and quickened his body. So he remained as a man. And he seated as G at the side of God as a man. So that resurrection will be phenomenal. The only man that was not brought up by the hand of a man, yet he came up. So that you and I can have resurrection power. I pray for you today in the name of Jesus. Resurrection will no longer be an event. It will not be a story, but the climax of resurrection is that you embody resurrection. That is the climax of resurrection. That you and I will experience his power. You and I will experience his working. And tomorrow, we are going to do the mathematics. We are going to do the permutation and combination of what it means to partake of his death and to partake of his resurrection. We are going to look at the implication of what it means to work as a resurrected believer and in the name of Jesus Christ whatever shackle has tied you down before now they are broken I said they are broken I said they are broken I said they are broken in the name of Jesus let your amen loud let it loud God bless you Hallelujah. Come on, let's, let's give the Lord a hand clap and praise one more time. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you for bringing us into the resurrection land.
Firstly, there was such a heavy impartation. I believe if you've been here for the last few months, what you have said is confirmation for so many things verbatim, word for word. It's like you were sitting in meetings. It's like you, it's like you were sitting here. Nothing that was said was strange. But from a kindred spirit, and it, it is proof. You validated so many things, man of God. So many things. So many, so many things. You started speaking about the apostolic. <laughs> January 1, we had a meeting in my house with the leaders. In my house. And we talked of the apostolic culture. The apostol and we talked about the tenets of the apostolic culture. And everything you have said, I wish, I, I, I would have to recite your entire message and, and give commentary as to how I know and it has confirmed that your coming, God saw it fit for you to come. For us and as a people. There are things which have been transpiring. Oh, but it is true. Thank you for confirming. Can, can we celebrate the seven of God? Can we thank God one more time for blessing us? Yeah. I don't want to be emotional because, you know, these are nights that one mistake we could be it could become an overnight it could become a night video one these are the songs where i read i read a post somewhere said they told you to close the night the meeting in prayer i you start saying hey yeah that <laughs> day yeah yeah we could be here another have you been blessed tonight have you been blessed tonight can I, can I make this decision and, and please hear me by the spirit and I say this respectfully um, we will not take offering in any meeting except for the normal Sunday meeting right I know people <laughs> when you said freely you have received freely that struck a chord so I was quiet it was not when I was looking in the sky, it was not the word. I was, I entered a conversation with the Holy Ghost. And I've, we've been given strict instructions. So only our Sunday service will we collect the normal Sunday service. Tomorrow night, as we have heard, will be a healing service. Tomorrow night. So please, we'll prepare for that. Right? And tomorrow morning, we have a session from 10 please come I don't know about you but there's a certain depth and you know uh, depth of, of teaching that we are drawing from here I, I speak as one that has been in these circles long enough I don't know about you but I'm tired I'm tired of the same sin I'm tired of it's my year it's been seven years I'm tired. I'm tired. If God be God, let us see him. Let, let us know him. Let's, let's not do this. Don't come. Listen, don't come if you are expecting to have microwave messages. There, there are parishes that can help you with a quick one hour. I'm telling you now, don't come. If, if you are not ready to... People, people need to read the Bible. The Bible says that there was one meeting that Peter, rather Paul preached so long, a guy fell asleep. When, when he, he fell asleep, he died. He broke his neck, died. They resurrected him and continued. The, he, Peter said the devil is a liar. The death will not stop this meeting. Wake up in Jesus name. Let's move on. There is, there is, there's a, our world has tricked us. It has made us quicken everything that is of God instead of looking for the quickening of God. 
We want to hasten everything that is of God. While you live here, you who's your name, you go and stay up until 03 watching series. May we learn to be. Oh, yes, I hear you. You would have kept looking at the time wherever you are. When you reach, it will be four o'clock in the morning. And you wonder, where did the time go? That should be what? Sir, please, we will we'll ask ourselves, where did the time go? This weekend, this weekend we want you to offload. If it means we block the timer, we will block it. We will block it. This weekend is a special weekend. So I don't want you to feel restricted, man of God. I don't want you, please. If it means we move things, we move things. Even television stations say that, please, the program has shifted. The program will shift. Whatever needs to shift. But this weekend, whatever you must shift, shift it. Shift it. Whatever must be shifted, shift it. How many kitchen parties have you there? Shift it. Shift it. That person is from down the road. <laughs> Let me, let me. Have you been blessed tonight? Have you been blessed? We are so. Please, ten o'clock we start. Ten o'clock, right? Ten o'clock we start. We have our morning session and our afternoon session again, right? And on Sunday we have our morning session and our worship session in the evening, right? But we are here to to really draw. Amen. Have you been blessed one more time? Let's give the Lord a hand clap. Okay. All right. At this point, I'll allow our guests to be escorted out. Uh, Minister Philip and Kevin, you may also make your way. Can we celebrate them one more time? Can I ask the elder, you can lead them out. Elder, you can lead them out. You can lead them out. Um, please, can we celebrate them one more time? This weekend there will be such depth of spiritual maturity you don't want to miss this weekend. Do your best to be here. Do your best to be here. I always tell people online is for people that are far. You, if you're online, live down the road. You are marked as you are not here. It's for far. Not down the road. Yeah, it can change. Forget. You're outside. All right? Let's lift up our right hand as we say the grace. Surely, goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life. And I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever and ever. Amen. Shalom, shalom. God bless you. See you tomorrow.